This weakens the sun's gravitational pull and shifts the Earth's orbit slightly outwards. And so if you're in the orbit, if you're, if you're standing on the Earth, you're skimming around the outside of the sun. During at noon, the sun fills your whole sky from one horizon to the other. And it's very hot here. It's the same temperature as the inside of a kiln that you use for making pots. So the surface of the Earth turns a, 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 a solid. The oceans are all gone. But things don't stay like this forever. Once nuclear fusion ends, the sun starts to shrink while furiously spewing out gas. Not only Earth, but every planet of the solar system becomes engulfed in this huge cloud of gas. A white dwarf emerges, the remnant of the burnt out sun. And then, it illuminates the scattered gases, forming a planetary nebula. If seen from far, far away, a beautiful nebula such as this will appear, suspended in the pitch black darkness. Meanwhile, if it were seen from Earth, Balak believes the nebula would produce an extraordinary spectacle. At night, the gases that it had ejected earlier and which become the planetary nebula that surrounds the sun, they're faintly visible over the night sky. What would it look like? The, the planetary nebula would look like an aurora that fills the whole sky night after night after night. Wrapped inside the planetary nebula created by the sun, Earth will see a night sky like no other. This will be the last glorious glow of the sun as seen from Earth. Tens of thousands of years later, the white dwarf will cool down and the nebula will start to fade. This will be the sun's final manifestation.